Ladies and gentlemen, this is Doug Papa from the Doug Papa Podcast. Today is Saturday, May 27th, 2023. The time is 1732 hours Pacific. That's 532 p.m. Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, if you follow my podcast, in episodes 142 and 143, I broke the exclusive story about something falling from the sky in Las Vegas, early morning hours of May 1st. 2023 and I did a uh, in that first video that I did you saw uh, well you heard a video uh, interview that I did and I recorded the audio portion on the podcast uh, with the witness it was about an eight minute podcast I have uh, a gentleman on the phone who was the when I did that exclusive podcast earlier um, this is Angel and he's the young man that I spoke to in the first podcast and uh, today I went back up to the house and uh, he's going to describe some stuff, and I can attest that I saw this circle depression in the rear yard of the house earlier this afternoon when I was up there. And both Angel and his father um, described to me what they saw that night. Um, and now we have uh, Angel, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, tell me from the start what happened in the early morning hours of May 1st, maybe it would have been uh, it would be before, you know, April 30th or uh, around midnight. Um, tell me in your own words what you saw, and then I'm not going to interrupt you, and then at the end I'll ask you some questions. So go ahead and start. Okay, so um, I was um, in, the, in the backyard in front of the house. I was fixing a truck for my dad and my brother. And we moved this car, and then out of nowhere we just see something, we heard a noise. But as the snow was coming down, you could see a big light reflecting it. And when it fall down, you could feel a big impact. And when the impact fall, you couldn't see nothing. It was all blurry. But the vision I saw was blurry, as you couldn't see nothing in the backyard. But um, when it fall down, you could feel a big impact when it fall down. And there was smoke everywhere. And your eyes get blurry. And, and then you, the only thing you see is footsteps. and it was all blurry, full set. Um, that was it. That was a very scary experience. You couldn't, like, how can I say this? Like, your soul was out of your body. You, could, you couldn't really talk too much, and you couldn't really talk too much. And um, from there, I called my mom, and I came outside, and we saw something walking. And then we walked in the backyard, and we see a, uh, a creature. We see a creature peeking, and it was a very big creature, maybe like a silver color or green color. It was a, you can see it's naked, it's shiny, big eyes, big head, the very long legs, skinny body stretched out, and it just looked at us. And when we looked at it, we got scared, and we um, we ran back to the backyard where, where we were fixing the car, mm-hmm. and then we were fixing the car, and then. Me and my brother, we saw it again, standing up, looking at us, and it was kind of close to me. And I saw it, and then when you look at it, you get stuck in your head, and your legs get very heavy. Right. And um, I don't know, it's like it's like kind of like a sleep paralysis. You can't move. You just you just look in the eyes, and then you get stuck in it. And then you can hear it breathing. What I was thinking when it fell down, I think it like it it hurt himself because it was, he was breathing very loud. And his leg was kind of like bent, like a broken leg, if that makes sense. You say when it was but, walking, uh, the legs appear to be bent. I no. When I saw it, say, like uh, like standing up uh, on his two legs, mm-hmm. the legs were like bent in a way. I don't know if, if they're like that or, but I saw what like the legs were like bent on the side, and it was breathing very like when I heard it breathing, I, I heard him breathing my mind. If that makes sense. And when I was out there early this afternoon, your father uh, pointed to a, a metal pole in the backyard and said it was about that height. And I, I, I stood next to him, I'm six feet tall, and that put it about uh, over eight feet tall. Is that about the height that you saw? Uh, it's around nine, maybe close to ten. I couldn't see, I couldn't, I really didn't, but yeah, it was very tall. It was a very tall creature, but I saw it very tall. And how many of these things did you see? Um, what I'm thinking, I think there are two of them. Two? Yeah. Okay. 
Now, let's get back to um, explain to me when you said you saw this thing fall or whatever it was. Your, were your eyes blurry or was the the object blurry? The object, I couldn't see nothing. But not your like eyes. In a way, he, no, my eyes, no, no, no. Because when I look back in the front yard, everything was, everything was visible. And my brother was there too. Um, when you look where, you know, the, the landing happened, when you look there, like the whole backyard was blurry in a way. It was foggy. Okay, did you see, um, did you physically fire? smoke or what did you think this was that was surrounding the craft like uh maybe i don't know it was very blurry i couldn't really i couldn't really see nothing but maybe i i saw dust i saw dust and so that's about it but i i know that i saw blurry i couldn't see nothing okay then that there will come a time when the blurry object went away and you didn't see anything there is that correct no, I never saw the the thing that fall down. Well, I I never saw like the um correct me if I'm wrong, but um like the like the UFO. Right. Put it like that. I never I never saw the thing, but I heard it, and I felt it. And then when you looked in that direction, you couldn't see anything because the area where this thing supposedly crashed was blurry, right? Correct. Yes, correct. Okay. And but uh, after like five five to six seconds. I saw everything again. And then what did you see after five, six seconds? After five, six seconds, I saw somebody, uh, like a tall figure, walk running. And it was naked, and it was just, it was just run fast. Sometimes, I, like, I saw it walk from the from left to right very fast. Did you see where it went after that point? No, I went behind the forklift. Okay. When this, okay. Um, Let's go back to when the, did you see something fall from the sky before you saw this, this, this thing in the backyard? Did you see something fall from the sky? I saw the ring when it fell, like, uh, like straight from the sky down to the house. And what did it look like when it was coming down? Um, it was like, uh, like, how can I say? It kind of like, like an object. It wasn't like, uh, I saw like, how can I say this? Like round, let's put it that way, round. And it was like light, like it was light. Like it was like a like a shield with light in it. Like it was there was so many lights, big light though, very bright. And what color? What the color was the bright light? What color was the bright light? Maybe like a bluish green, and then at the end, it was, oh, actually, I saw sparks when it fell down. I saw a lot of sparks. Sparks when it was falling, or when it hit the ground? When it hit the ground, I saw sparks. I forgot to mention that, but it was like a reddish sparks. And when I when I saw it from the sky. It was a greenish color, and when it fell down, it turned red and then blue. And then when it, when I, when I, when I, the last thing I saw was sparks, a little bit sparks. Okay. And I was out there earlier this afternoon. I spoke to your brother and your father, and um, you, your father told me basically the same thing that you said, and they show, okay. Now, um, what happened after that? Tell me exactly what you did af after that. What happened? After that, um, after the... When I when when my sight went back to normal, I heard a lot of footsteps, and I, and I kind of in a way I heard like a little bit of uh, like voices, but I did heard a lot of a lot a lot of footsteps everywhere. Like you can you can feel them behind you, in front of you, on the side of you, and everywhere. And uh, in a in a way you get goosebumps everywhere. You you feel like you you're in a dream because like you get a lot of goosebumps. It's a very scary experience. After that, uh, me and my dad, we walked to the backyard all the way in the, in the wall. Right. And then we were walking back. As we were walking back, we saw in the forklift, we saw one of them inside looking at us. And it had big eyes. And, you, like, it looks like, like, it looks at you and when, you're, when you're walking. It looks at you when you're walking, mm -hmm. and it blinks. And you can see it blink and everything. And now at this point, one of them is inside the forklift? Yes. Like sitting down. Yes. Okay. Where 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 did they go from that point? Oh. From that point, we me, me and my dad ran. Oh, actually, when you when you look at it, you can't run. You you, you cannot run because your legs get very heavy in a way. Like you, you really can't move that much. But as soon as we you know we ran back where our yard is, and then from there we just called the cops and. And the cops came, and there was nothing no more. 
And what happened when the police came? The police came, so we uh, I called an elevator. I don't know if you have the police call, but uh, there's there's two creatures in the backyard, and has big eyes and silver silver looking green greenish big eyes and and the police like oh yeah we got to send a cop when the, when the two cops came i told them everything what happened and they and and that way they got scared when they walked in the backyard they're like i feel goosebumps i feel goosebumps and they're like and they just like they told us um if you see any if you see anything like that again try to give us a call but they told you guys don't give us a call if you have a gun shoot it that's, that's what they told us they said if you have, were, they said if you have a gun and your, your yeah. father has open carry right Correct, yes. Okay. When did you observe this circle in the, in the, uh, in the gravel? Uh, when the cops came. And the time on the, the photographs, cops. the time on the photographs, just so that the, you'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm uh, playing this recording into the podcast, I'll, uh, you'll see the photographs on the screen. I, I saw, when I was up there this afternoon, uh, uh, what looked like to be a circle a depression uh, inside the gravel in this rear yard of this family's home and um, Angel uh, actually snapped photographs you'll see that on the screen uh, and it says 1 37 a.m. on May 1st and it's pretty clear of what you're looking in there it is a it is a circle now when I was up there this afternoon I didn't see any burn marks I didn't see any uh, debris uh, there was nothing like something was burned into the ground but uh, the photograph you're looking at on the screen was taken by Angel while the police, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department officers were there at 1.37 in the morning on May 1st. Okay, so what happened after the uh, after the police left? After the police left, we just went inside, and the only thing you could see, you could you could hear um, like voices and that and they were walking on the roof. Like I heard footsteps on the roof. They trying to open the door, and like you get goosebumps. You really we couldn't really sleep that night. I didn't sleep that night. Okay, what are you saying? Uh, is somebody on the roof? Was that the police, or is that these things before the police got there? No, no, no I'm talking after the police left. We went inside the house because it's okay. So when I called the cops, they took around thirty minutes to get here. Right. Around there, twenty-five, thirty minutes. When they came over, they looked at everything. Not really. They didn't really look at it. Like they didn't. They didn't really like. They didn't look up anything. They just. He told me, "Wow, look, look at the circle." He told me, "My partner." She saw a light around 12, 12, 12 a.m. So like, I do believe you about this. And it was, you know, I don't want to, you know, make fun of them, but they're very, like, scared because mm -hmm. they, they, they know that it was real. It wasn't something I, I, I faked it or nothing. And actually, one of the cops told me, he, he showed me the circles. Like, look at this. He's like, well, was this here? I was like, no. He, he met. He, he showed me the, the circle. He's like, look at that. And all of us were, we and that's when he took the uh, photograph? Yes. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, as you know from our first two podcasts, uh, when I covered this on, exclusively on the first one and the second one, I also talked about the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department going onto that property. And when I spoke to the mother, that was May 19th. That was uh, last Friday when she said they came out and they stole the, the surveillance cameras. But when I was up there this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the cameras were gone. And, uh, and you'll hear Angel talk about that in a second. But I did notice another camera that was lower on the pole that I couldn't see when I was out there on Friday, May 19th, uh, and it's facing the rear yard. Angel, tell me what that camera is and, and who put that one there. Okay, the camera that was on the property already? Right. It's, uh, what, it's the owner. So the owner has a lot of stuff in the back, like motorhomes and trailers. So, you know, he has to protect his own stuff. And, he, oh, and is that recorded? That's recorded. Yes. Okay. It does record. Tell me, tell me what you found out about what was recorded on that ca on that camera. Tell me what you okay. told me this afternoon, as as how you know it. You know what we're talking about. I, you told me this afternoon in the backyard, and your father. What happened with that camera? Tell me. Tell the people what was going on with that. Okay. So the um, the, the owners he showed he they showed the the footage to the cops, and the cops said that. At uh, probably 11:50 something, a couple minutes before that happened, the the floor was perfect. Like the the the, the dirt was plain normal. Like there was no circle or no nothing. And around, and then it cut off the camera. And then I let 12 or maybe 12:03, 12:05. I don't know. A couple minutes after, the 
the print was there, the circle. So, but on the camera, there's there's nothing on it. Like there's no light, no nothing. So, so I'm clear here because this is what you told me this afternoon. It's basically the same thing saying here. The surveillance camera that's in the backyard that I saw is being recorded uh, to the phone line or something through the owner who's off that property. And the cops went out right. there to look at the video, and then you're saying they told you that they before this thing came down that you saw a couple of minutes before. Uh, the ground where they sh where you have the photographs, ladies and gentlemen, you're seeing it on the screen here. Uh, there was no no depression in the gravel. Then about two, maybe three minutes, you say or whatever you say, they're telling you that the camera, the surveillance camera, went out, and when it came back on on the recording, they now see the depression in the ground. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the re and the camera did not record anything actually physically coming down or crashing in the ground, except that the ground was normal. And then after it came back on, the circle that you took a picture of was there. Correct. Okay. And did it come any time when you saw something, now that it's on the ground, take off from the ground and go into the air? Did you see anything like that? No. So you don't have any idea where what this thing was or where it went, right? What happened to it once it, it made that circle? Correct. Correct. Because it was all blurry. I could see nothing. Okay. And I want to get to the blurriness so people understand. Yes. Was it your eyes that were blurry, or was it something that was around this thing, whatever it was, that was blurry, that was keeping you from seeing what it was? That's exactly what it was, because my my eyes was, were blurry. What I saw was blurry. So you I couldn't really see what it was? That. Okay. Correct. Okay. At a certain point, on the, on the, at a certain point, it was all blurry, and that's, that's about it. And then when it became not blurry, what did you see at that point? When I, when it wasn't blurry no more, right? I saw the the creatures. You know, when I told you, I saw the the big, tall figure, alien-looking thing, standing up and looking at us. And but you didn't see any type of craft. Uh, craft. Once the blurriness went away from around this thing, you didn't see anything falling. Anything there, right? Just the creatures. No, just the creatures. And the only thing I saw was the light. Hold on. The light coming down. And you have you don't know where these things went when uh when you saw them. They they went where they went, right? Okay. Were there when the cops got there? Were there any type of uh, footprints in the ground that night? Or did, uh, did you see that didn't belong to you? The next morning I did because it was nighttime. I couldn't really see nothing. You know, we were all scared, and you know, it was very tra like in a way it was traumatizing because you know it was it was a lot on our head on our head because it was like wow we just saw the creatures and but the next morning me and my dad and my parents we went in the backyard to check. And exactly where the circle is, there's like there's foot footprints coming out of the circle, and it walked all over the yard. You can see big uh, footsteps. And how big were the footprints? Do you think? Maybe fifteen inches, maybe. Okay. Did you take photographs of those? I did not. Okay. Did they look like a human footprint or a shoe or anything like that? No. 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 I see the the. Not only was there a footprint, but it was very deep. Like, what I'm thinking, I think they were heavy because it was very deep in the in the, in the dirt, in the rocks. Okay. The first two police officers that came out, and I talked about that in the first podcast. You told me you saw that, you know, half the podcast. Uh, were they two males, or was a male and a female the first night, May first? No, uh, two males. Two males. Did there come a time when other police officers came back and spoke to you and your family? Yes, on May six, I think, a couple of days after. And who were they? Uh, two sergeants. There were two males, sergeants. And why did they say they came back? Supposedly that the the other officers they uh, they didn't do they, they didn't do a good job investigating what happened, and they were just gonna come and check the. If nothing was stolen, they're like maybe it's a human. They probably stole some catalytic converters, or you know, they they were trying to they were trying to find fingerprints or stuff like that, and they just left. But and they came very late, around twelve something. I think. So what? So it was twelve thirty in the morning. So it would have been dark. It wouldn't have been during the day. Twelve thirty a.m. No, no, in the nighttime. Um, not in the midnight. Midnight. Okay, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, he. he there's photographs that I'll show on the screen of the officers in the backyard at that time. Now, um, 
Tell me about uh, the police coming out and putting the surveillance cameras uh, that I already talked about and, and showed them on uh, the, the earlier podcast. Tell me about uh, yeah. why they told you they put those in there. Uh, they're like, well, there's a lot of media. Then, so the, I'm telling you what what the what the detectives told me. They're like, there's a lot of media, and we try to put a camera in the backyard. If somebody trying to jump the fence. It's, they told me it's, it's for your uh, protection and your family. So we gotta put a camera in the backyard so journalists cannot jump or, you know, people trying to jump the backyard. Supposedly there's like a lot of people that know that knew about it. So. And when I came back today. Uh... I saw, obviously, the surveillance cameras that the police installed weren't there. When did they come out and take those out, and why did they tell you they pulled them out? Um, it was around, I think, May. What's the day? May seventeenth. No, today's the uh, the today's the twenty seventh. I was there last Friday. Your oh, mom said they put them in on the nineteenth, and then uh, when they're not there now. So, what, what between Friday the nineteenth and today? Would you remember when they came out and why they told you they pulled them off? They they take them they took them out around. Four days ago, three days ago, and they told me they, they took him out because um, that one of the cameras or both of the cameras went bad, and they're gonna fix them and put it back. That's what they told me. So they told you're gonna fix them and put it back in there. Okay. As far as you know, Angel, did your family request the police to put those cameras in, or did they just say they that they put them in? And they got permission from the owner. That's what your mom said. Or did you say we want you to put cameras in because we're afraid? Do you, you know anything about that? Um, they. They, they asked permission from us and the owner, and we said, yeah. For the for the purpose of because they said that uh, media would be coming out there? Correct. Ha okay. After the after this thing happened on May 1st, how many how many media or other people came out to your house and, and talked to you while we're looking around the house? Just give me an estimate. Um, I never pulled anybody in the backyard except for you. Like journalists or people like like podcast people, but uh, the news channel came. The people from the news and some other people too, some big names came over. And but you know, around two three people, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then that's about it. They they um they want to do an interview with me, but you know I don't want to do it. So what what did they take pictures of? Did they get? Did they uh, did they go in the backyard? No, I did not. I did not put it in the backyard. Okay, okay, and um, I asked you this before, just because I this is an investigative podcast, and I, uh, your father gave me the, told, told me what he said to you, and I asked both your dad and you, and your brother was there. I said, yeah. um, is any part of this that you told me and what you told me the other day uh, for the podcast when I interview and what you told the police is any part of this a hoax made up, embellished? No. Okay. Okay. What do, what do you think this, what do you think this, uh, just give me your opinion here, this is uh, strictly your, your opinion. What do you think it was and what do you think that creature was that was walking around? Well, I think it was, I don't know, it looked demonic to me, it looked very, so it's not a good thing, but um, it looked like, you know, like an alien. Like if you check, if you go on, like, on Google, you put alien, that's exactly what it looks like. But kind of different because the eyes look different and the body and yeah. For me, this is you know something that that like alien. That's, that's that's my opinion. Okay, and I asked you and your dad and ladies and gentlemen, you're seeing the photographs that uh, Angel took the early morning hours of May first at one thirty-seven, and when I was up there today. Um, it's not as identifiable as it was there, but you could actually see there there is a circle impression in the uh, in the, in the ground in the rear yard. Uh, it's more pronounced in that photograph that they took on the early morning hours of, of May first. And uh, you, your daddy, your family did not make that circle, right? Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, what is the last contact you had with the police on this? When was the last contact, and, and what did they say the last time any police officer spoke to you about this? Um, on May, when the when the police officers came and took, took off the cameras about it, that was the last time I ever talked to one of them. Okay. And I asked you this the other day on the podcast, and then um, yeah. um, I asked you, has any other organ organization, anything from the government, um, ever been out and, and physically interview you? In other words, says, I'm from A, B, and C, and I, I need to do it. Has that, has that happened? Well, the, 
the only thing that they were they trying to talk to me was the news people and some other people too, some YouTubers and stuff. But actually, I fo- I forgot to mention this, but on May sixth, when, mm-hmm. uh, when the when pe- the two sergeants came, and and the, the around in the afternoon, mm-hmm. there was uh, I was working on my on my truck. Me and my brother, we were outside in, in the yard, and a government truck passed by the house. And it was it was like kind of going slow, and there was three people inside with sunglasses and a suit and a, like in maybe 2010 Chevy Suburban maybe mm-hmm. it was black Suburban, and I ran after the truck so I could see the plates and well the only thing I saw from the plate was the uh, U.S. government a white plate with American flag in it. And did the the vehicle stop or did it keep on going? No, it just kept on going. When when I ran to it, they just went very fast and then the corner just disappeared. I went with my truck to go look for them. I couldn't. And you clearly saw the white U.S. government tag on the on the on this vehicle. Correct. Okay, and nobody contacted you from the government after that, or even before. Is that correct? No, no, never. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've been talking to uh, Angel, and uh, he is the gentleman I spoke to in the first podcast, episode one forty two. You'll see that eight minute. Uh, uh, clip audio clip that was taken off of the video and um, and again in this in this exclusive uh, interview with him and then this podcast that you're looking at now um, I gave the family my word as I did uh, when I was out there a week ago that I would not identify them uh, by last name give the location of their address uh, or anyway now I, according to what angel said there are some news people that know and other people have been out there but uh, I, I'm not going to do it because I know this could lead to uh, a, a lot of people going up there uh, and, and just bothering and, and harassing the family now. If, if, if more people find out about it, it's certainly not going to be for me. Um, Angel, is there anything else you want to tell me uh, about this? Um, I was going to tell you about uh, when I saw the government truck. It was on May 6th. And actually, that same, or later on the day, it was already nighttime. It was probably around 10 o'clock, maybe. Right. Um, in the backyard, there was a drone, and it just left. It was a drone in the backyard, so. What do you mean there was a drone? How do you know it was a drone? It was a drone. I saw it. Um, it had, it was a drone. It was kind of bigger. Like, how can I, maybe, like, 20 inches, maybe? Big drone? Like somebody could have had a drone trying to take pictures of the backyard? From your property? Maybe, yeah. But it, but it had police lights on it. It had blue and red police lights on it. It had blue and red? I don't know. It might, it might be the police. I don't know. And what night was this? But I just thought, uh, it was on May 6th, around 10 p.m. Okay. Okay. Anytime, before midnight. I asked you this afternoon with your father, and, and you gave me an answer, but uh, I just want the people to hear it. You, you know what, and I told you, what a, what a biohazard suit looks like. That, uh, yes, I do. Okay. And... Um, and actually, you could it have been a uh, a human being in some type of a biohazard suit? You know, they have the hoods on, and sometimes they they look dark. There's different you know, there's different versions of them, and, and you don't think that was what it could have been, right? No, I'm, no, it was not. I'm I'm 100 percent sure it's not because I saw everything. The whole. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention this. When I saw it standing, when it looked when it looked at us, I had a light on it, like like a light was reflecting on it, and and. No, it, it was not a human because you could look at it. It was very tall. There's no, there's no human being nine foot tall, ten foot tall. Right. But I saw it. It was naked. Uh, you could see the stomach moving. You could see the rib cage. Everything. You could see everything. And and it had big head, like big, big, big head. And the eyes too were big. And what did the eyes look like? I, uh, the one I saw inside the forklift, right. they were like, uh, they were like a neon, maybe. Like it was like it had bright light eyes, and then the one I saw standing it had human eyes. Like you could see big particles, and like the eyes, you could see the blink and everything. You could see eyelashes too. You could see eyelashes also. Yes, I did. I did see. They were very big. Like you could when when it blinked, like it looked at you it was blinking, it was moving, it was. It was something scary that not not human. Okay. Um, anything else you want to say? Um, no. Okay. I, that's about it, yeah. 
Okay. And, and uh, again, let me ask you this. I don't mean any disrespect. I asked your dad the same question, and, and he told me no. There's uh, this is not uh, this is not a hoax. None of this is made up. You didn't do this for attention, or because um, if you no. did, you know, people do that all the time. They'll see something in the sky, and they'll say, "Okay, let me add stuff into it." So uh, this is not a hoax. Is that correct? Nope. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, I saw what I saw. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I saw what I saw, my brother saw it, my dad saw it, you know, I don't drink, we don't drink, we don't, you know, we don't do drugs, none of that. We were, we were wide awake, we weren't, we were not sleepy, nothing like that. We were working in a car and we saw that, and, you know. Okay. Just, well, uh, yeah. thanks thanks for the interview, and um, no if you got my number to call me if uh, anything else comes up. Uh, I also want to be notified if, if anybody uh, comes out there, especially from the government and talks to you. And I'll ask you one more question. Um, when the police were out there, did any of the police tell you at any time not to talk to anybody about this? Well, they, they told me, do, do whatever you want. But they're like, if I was you, just ignore them, try to talk to them. That's, that's what they told me. And when I talked to you the other day on that six minute, you said that uh, they somebody told you that it's it was, you said it's supposed to be kept secret. Who who told you not to say anything about it if it wasn't the police? Um, somebody told me. So I try not to talk about it too much. Try not to have a problem with the government. So that that's all. You know, trying to I wasn't trying to because you know if if it was something that I want to spread a lot, I would have gone on the, on the news already. But it's not. Well, they told me. Try not to talk about it too much and kind of keep it a secret, okay? And who told you that? Who told you that? I really can't mention it. Sorry. Okay. Was with it? Was it okay? When I said, was it the police or was it journalist? Um, a journalist told me that too, and the police told me try not to talk about it too much. Okay.